I'm here today with Sarah Collada, the founder of AM Architecture Masterclass, because she'll moderate a panel discussion at the Architect Success Forum later this month. And if you want to know more about that, Sarah's panel will be on September 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern. If you haven't heard about the Architect Success Forum yet, it's a five-day virtual event for architects around the world. I'll include a link to the website below, but over the course of five days, there'll be 12 sessions, all with Q&A at the end to make sure that every architect that attends, including you, will get the most out of all of the sessions and be able to apply what was presented specifically to their own firm's success. Now, what's interesting to me is that Sarah has evolved from a focus strictly on an architectural practice to diverse entrepreneurship and specifically on teaching other architects to discover alternative ways to generate income outside of their traditional practice. Now, Sarah, you'll be joined by Brian McCartney from ArcMark, Eric Bobro from Architect Marketing Institute, Mark LePage from Entree Architect and myself, and I'm sure everyone will have their own opinions and reasons uh, during this panel, which is called, Is Content Marketing Really Worth Your Time? But since it's just you and me right now, I'll ask you on your own, is content marketing worth your time? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, you can see from my own social media that I use these methods a lot for marketing. And I just believe that the best way to speak to your audience and to help people that you care about is through sharing your opinions and educating. And each of us has this expertise, whatever we're doing, right? Whether we're architects, whether we uh, studied business and we got experts in that because of the experience we got or the studies we got, the knowledge that we have. But I just think that content marketing allows um, us to communicate beyond just, you know, what we like, what we don't like, but also educate and give value to our audience. And it kind of opens this loop of communication where someone can speak back to you and uh, give feedback. And it starts really interesting, engaging conversations. And I'm really fascinated by this. I love that part of my work. Uh, because I get to know people better. I get to understand also the pain points of my community better. Uh, and just generally talking about issues within the architecture industry with people online is, is kind of like a better way to reflect on it as well and find solutions. So it's been very helpful for my business, but also generally I find that people see that perhaps if you're an architect and you're struggling with something, you're not alone with it. And it's a very powerful thing um, to experience. And I feel that content marketing kind of feeds into all of that. It builds community. It helps you educate. It helps you give value. It, can, it helps you to show that um, you care for your community and vice versa. Your community sees that it can rely on you, that you're trustworthy, that you're a genuine person. They get to know you better for who you are because you show up there for them. And then obviously it kind of opens that space for conversation. Um, so yeah, I absolutely believe that content marketing is important. And it's what strikes me is that at one point in your career, of course, you're, you're trained as an architect, educated as an architect, you had your own uh, architecture firm uh, early in your career. And then at one point, you started a film production company. And now you're helping architects create online info products. So you've been creating content for a long time. Can you speak for a minute or two on uh, how those efforts have shaped your career personally? Um, so yeah, basically um, being an architect first, I got to experience what the design industry is like, right? Um, so the main thing that I was selling was design and um, I was serving clients based on their needs in respect of you know, whatever houses they wanted to build or renovations they wanted to get done. I worked on hotel projects as well. And it was all about building and listening to the client and their vision and kind of putting it together on paper. And when it came to the business aspect of things, I realized that um, it's harder to scale and that I don't really quite understand the success journey of an architect. Like, yes, of course, we all kind of thought that we have to do internships and we need to you know, start serving maybe clients that are, 
mm, wealthier or bigger projects so that that way we can get into better recommendations and through that recommendation get new clients etc but i found it a little, little bit um daunting that um depending on the serve the era that you're impacting with your design you may not be able to grow that drastically as you would in new york or in london and then obviously with the competition how do you really bring your message across you know in the right way to really reach your clients and then i also realized that i actually like lacked this basic business acumen which related to my ability to negotiate prices or um you know kind of um also like face sales objections so if my client came in and they said oh i don't really know about that because you know i believe it should be like this i was always like oh okay and then like i had to learn to really kind of um, sell myself and like kind of respond cleverly to this situation i think that just sales but i didn't have that at the beginning and so what was fascinating for me was like kind of getting into understanding how business is done and once i started reading about this i got really fascinated about growth and you know when you look into the tech industry or uh you know many business sectors have that that when you're a startup you start and then there is a certain um kind of target expected from you you also should raise a certain amount of money especially in the tech industry like if you're developing and your minimum valuable product you normally just to test your idea you need like 50,000 euro or dollars and then once the idea is tested and it works you need to raise more money and so every stage is kind of clearly defined right and you know that okay in this stage i need to do this in the other stage it should be good if i grow to that level and then get like more money for it investment etc so it kind of makes sense but in architecture we almost don't have it and so i think that everybody is navigating through it very intuitively and that intuition on its own it can be like each of us will go like take that path differently so what was really fascinating for me was to learn about business and now in return i just want to help people basically understand and kind of put goals set goals up and um one of the things that is really powerful nowadays is digital marketing and the technology that's available to us we can communicate you know close like internationally through zoom we can make calls we can organize conferences we can exchange knowledge there's almost like no limit to the way we can do business and communicate nowadays and i just think that digital transformation will really bring new solutions into the market of architecture just like netflix took out blockbusters completely out of business and it's like it was natural we all accepted it and then that's exactly there will be these kind of changes in architecture too and i think that you can deny it as an architect you may be like oh i'm traditionalist i don't think certain things will ever change but they will some things will change there will be an uber that will come about one day in architecture and just shake things up and if you are not ready to jump on that wagon someone else will but whether you're ready or not one day the way we're doing business today is going to just change and you're going to have to adapt so i just think you know you might be like stubborn to it and things like that but like it's better to just be open minded and that's kind of why i do that because i like to I like to kind of motivate people and inspire people to see things a little bit outside of that box of how we today perceive architecture, doing business in architecture, even studying architecture, getting chartered and practicing and and growing our businesses. Yeah, you you made a lot of really good points there and and you know just just the point about zoom and disruption and everything else if we if we just take the context of our conversation right now you're in berlin i'm in indianapolis um we're talking about a essentially a global conference that will have about it's about actually it starts a week from today as we're recording this right now and if we look at the speaker lineup uh for the architect success forum we have speakers that span the globe from the western coast of the united states all the way around to australia and back and so we we're, we're literally a global all the way around via zoom we're having this conversation and um a lot of what will be discussed during this conference during during this um uh this forum is, is the actual name of it i guess is about the future of community or, or communications of of marketing and all of those things. So I love I love everything you just said. Now, 
obviously the panel discussion will be a conversation between a number of people. You know, that's that's the way these things work, right? But is there a particular takeaway that you hope will come out of the discussion? Yes, there is. And, you know, kind of touching back on the point of what that I just made, I think that Zoom, honestly, is like a Walkman <laughs> back in the day. This is just, it's just kidding. something that like kind of, you know, you, like kind of disrupted the music industry because now we could take this, you know, this thing and put the cassette in there and have music walking around the street, right? But it didn't stop on a Walkman. Then came an iPod and an iPad. Now we have everything in our phones. And I think that this is like what we're doing right now is kind of early days. And we will look back at it in five years and think, wow, this was primitive technology and our approach to it was also primitive. But um, I think the takeaway I would like to for people to really see that this is what's happening. Like you're just, this is just a Walkman. <laughs> you can use it, you, you may not, but there's going to be so much more. And the world as we know it, conferences, forums, um, you know, conversations like that, um, there's going to be new things that will emerge. And, and it, it, I just think it would be great for people to realize that. And perhaps when we talk about content marketing, obviously we're talking about tools, tools such as using, you know, Facebook for your marketing using LinkedIn for your marketing. So realize that this is out there for you to better your business and prepare yourself for what's to come because we're not going to move backward. We're going to only move forward and technology is speeding up with each year. So, you know, maybe we're in this era of Walkman, but very soon there's going to be something new. And before you know it, the technology is going to be so advanced that if you find yourself in that reality and you have never used LinkedIn or you don't have an Instagram account, let's just say, you're going to be starting from zero. So might as well start now, whatever it is, just put your, you know, your um, portfolio online, your content, your knowledge and position yourself to the community as it is because it's going to grow. People will start realizing that digital technology kind of swoops over the world and many industries. And, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm predicting this huge change and like we will never have the traditional architecture available to us ever again or traditional education, but it's inevitable that things will change. And I just think, you know, if you're a participant of this kind of forum or if you're listening to these ideas, one thing that you can get out of it is, you know, it might as well be the right time to kind of get interested in these topics. Because I remember you, Jeff, been telling me in the past how you've been talking about social media for architects for years now. And every year it becomes more and more of a popular topic. And you, you didn't expect that to happen. But like, that's exactly, it proves the point of what I'm just saying. You know, in five years, more and more people are going to want to know this. <laughs> Yeah, those are all great points and and a great analogy too. It's this is the Walkman, and and you're exactly right. I mean, we're we're not we're not ever going to go back, right? This is where we are. You know, there are a lot of people wanting to get back to normal, wondering what the new normal is, and it's you know it isn't going back. So how do we move forward? That's a really great point. So this, is a, this has been a fun conversation and, and a good one at that. So why don't we wrap this up with just one more question. And this is my curveball question. It it's, can be a little bit of a, a tricky one, but what's the one question about content marketing that most people don't ask, but they should? Hmm, good question. Um... I think, you know, a lot of people kind of come into this uh, topic with an idea that is it really necessary for architecture? Um, I think the answer to it is yes. And the question is, how can I utilize it um, to my advantage for my particular business, for the scope of the topics that I cover in my business and for my audience? That's the question that I think people should be asking that they do not asking because a lot of them are stuck at this is this even important to me you know yes it is important to you it's very very much important to you and you should be asking how can you utilize you know that ability of technology to position your business further so you know is it which platform is good for you what message should you be sending who is your audience um 
looking deeper into it and actually asking valid questions in response to it instead of wanting to know whether this is for me and is this valid to my business. It is valid. Yeah, that's a really good point. And again, it's, you know, if, if we've come this far, you know, by, by now it's not going back. And if you're, if you're still asking the question, you know, you mentioned one of the conversations that you and I had about social media. Um, yeah, it is valid and, and you better get on board, I guess is, is, uh, is one way to say that. Sarah, I really appreciate you taking the time out to record this conversation with me. It's been a good one. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to sitting in on the panel with you. Uh, the name of that panel is, it's, is Content Marketing Worth Your Time? And it will happen on Tuesday, September 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern. Now, uh, like I said early in the interview, I will post a link to the Architect Success Forum uh, website in the comments below. And if you are watching this on YouTube, I will put it in the description. And I'll also put information on Sarah and her work and how to get in touch with Sarah there in the uh, description on the YouTube video. So uh, with that, thank you, Sarah, very much again. Looking forward to, as always, I, I enjoy our conversations uh, all the time. So uh, looking forward to talking to you again soon and uh, sitting in on this panel with you uh, next week, at least as we record this. So thanks a lot. Excellent. Thank you so much. See you guys.